as I became a bit more of a student of filmmaking, I really began to appreciate the brilliance of Star Wars and, and what Lucas had created. And then I, of course, started to read more and the hero's journey and all those kinds of you know books and began to really appreciate Joe Campbell and what he was saying and understand a lot more. Then, for me, it became, wow, you know, uh, it was beyond being groundbreaking, Star Wars was. It was, in its own way, uh, again, like a crack into some sort of uh, other universe that, that I hadn't been exposed to, you know? Um, so it was, uh, it was pretty phenomenal, uh, not only w what it was at the time, but what it has become. As an actor, when you step into something and you get a chance to work with someone who is talented in front of and behind the camera and who really understands, uh, first of all, the process of making the project, the movie or television, whatever it is, but then also has this affinity for being in front of the camera as an actor, there is someone that you can feel comfortable we're talking to because the language he understands you know and so any uh, thoughts ideas questions uh, bemusements whatever it is that you have you know he really will engage my character grief which is interesting name Two E's, not an I and an E. But uh, he's, in my opinion, a businessman. And he is looking to get a particular product uh, for the highest bidder or for a client who is looking for something or has, needs to have something returned, whatever the case may be. And this businessman supplies basically those people who will go out and hunt down whatever his clients are looking for. And so grief in this particular story, uh, among others, hires the Mandalorian to go out and bring back a bounty. And the, the bounty is worth quite a bit more, I think, than even grief knew in the beginning. Much of, of of the Star Wars projects is that yes there is the Western it is from the West as we know it that particular type of storytelling but there's also again in all of this there's this very Eastern uh, kind of brush stroke or brush strokes that go on so you know there is a there is this kind of the Buddha looking for enlightenment and searching and searching and searching and finally settling under the tree and realizing that the search wasn't out there, the search was in here. I think Star Wars is such a part of people's lives and it's something that they just see now on a regular basis that when you uh, say George Lucas and he created it, I don't think people give enough full value to what that means. Um, I like to think I do, but I worked with him. So I've seen him create it. I've seen the person that uh, comes up with the lines and the dialogue and understands Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker in a very deep level because those characters are a part of him and, and for my part you know joining Lucasfilm I always respected that it, I never felt that Star Wars is something that was mine I felt privileged to be a part of telling the story I felt grateful that I got to do it with George the Mandalorian it's interesting I mean we all know the helmet but the helmet is Boba Fett and that was a big challenge in the beginning of this. And John and I went round and round like, well, how do we tell the story? And it's not Boba Fett or is it Boba Fett, <laughs> you know? 
and we would talk about that and you know but a helmet at the end of the day is a helmet and i've shown that helmet quite a bit on rebels and clone wars and so there are fans that get the language of it that it's you know a tool it's a piece of equipment but to the average person if you show them that helmet if they say anything they'll say it's boba fett so we immediately start to draw visual you know differences between the two characters our character is much more bulked up than Boba ever was. His armor is actually quite different if you look at it. His helmet's actually different, little different traits to it. The colors of it, you know, all these things point out at little differences. There are similarities, which are almost unavoidable. But we wanted to tell a story with somebody where we had kind of more of a blank page to write it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really for me i felt with the pilot my job was to show this guy as he is as he has been a hardened kind of weather beaten person that you know has been through things we can't imagine and is just doing a job and his job is hunting down beings and turning them in the consequences of that the morality of it i get paid you know and the pilot slowly chips away at that idea especially when he meets the Ugnaught. And this little, you know, being is suddenly helping him and then challenging him. And I think it starts to make the gears in Mando's head wonder, what am I doing here and where is my line? What I've lost this idea of, you know, being a mercenary or being a person. I mean, I just think the key is you hire good people. You can get up caught up in what their talents are. I mean, obviously, to have done the work that they've all done, they're all really talented. But the big difference is what kind of person are you? And they're all just really wonderful people that are easy to get along with, easy to work with. We all get in a room, and I think because like this is so new to many of us that we all kind of get together on it, and it becomes a real team thing. Star Wars was a big influence on me because it was it came out in 77. I was born in 66. So I was right at the right age for that thing to hit. And it was before all the hype, you know, it was it was the first to kind of the popcorn blockbusters. You had that and then you had Spielberg's films. So you had like Jaws and that. But before then it was it was still the 70s, you know. It was 70s movies. And and I remember seeing, I don't even remember seeing a commercial. I remember seeing like a picture in the newspaper, like the New York Post or something about the movie. And it was after it was out already. And it was like, this looks pretty cool. Or it's coming out, I forget. Uh, and I saw the picture of like Chewbacca and Han Solo and whatever the headline was, I was intrigued. And I went to see it. And then it was just like, it just pinned my ears back, just looking at that thing. And I was just mouth agape. And just like everybody else who grew up in that period and didn't know about it. In this case, since there's real things on the set, we have real cameras and real people. The sets are bigger than they were on Jungle Book, but it's essentially the same formula. And now instead of having a green screen that you have to move around in light, which took forever, and that was really the frustration that led to these innovations, which was how could we do that without green screens next time? And so that led to, do you have a green, a green stage? Do you have pre-lit green areas that you could expose and and then it turned into these video walls where you could have green just behind the actor and then interactive light which we used on Jungle Book also for shadows and things on the characters which we were inspired by like gravity where they had all those video panels so it, it's like it, we took all the technology that I've been messing around with from all those other projects and applying it to a very specific application that would work for this There are such universal themes in, in the Star Wars stories, and ironically, I, f I, f I think people feel that it, you know, despite being fantasy sci science fiction, it reflects the world we actually live in, in its inclusiveness and diversity. 
and conflict and uh and themes of good against evil and uh um and 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 so it's it's fascinating to experience that as as a as a child you know to have your imagination so enriched by 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 these stories um and then now as an adult to look back and 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 rekindle my relationship to Star Wars um and in particular those Star Wars movies and the tone of this series which I find is a little bit more Empire Strikes Back and and uh, a bit grittier and edgier uh Star Wars that that um I realize wow these are these the you know in terms of uh war and and family and 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 personal conflict and personal journey and personal relationships it reflects so much what our actual reality as human beings on this planet is I remember getting a call uh from my agent saying that John Favreau wants to meet you uh regarding a Star Wars project and so I uh immediately said you know when and where uh i wanted to meet john favreau i didn't care what he wanted me to do i had no idea what it was whether it was a feature or you know a cereal box i had no idea and so um i i i i go and i meet john at his office and he invites me into this room that is basically you know um corner to corner covered in story illustrations of this project that he's working on and there are all of these incredible images of uh a Mandalorian character The Mandalorian whose name is Din Djarin um is your iconically cool flawed mysterious lone you know loner gunslinger um that harkens to the you know best of the samurai movies and the westerns and in talking to John I was I asked him what what should I be looking at I I know he loves movies I love movies what would you like me to watch I asked him and and he immediately brought up Sergio Leone and and uh Akira Kurosawa Yojimbo and and uh the good the bad and the ugly and so um he's very he's 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 very samurai uh Clint and uh and me <laughs> and uh just wedge me into those two iconic uh 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 characters um because he's also what I what, what I love the opportunity uh to make him as 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 human and as accessible as possible which is strange to say because it's impossible to get to him cuz he's covered in armor from head to toe and and yet um the idea is that you know he's 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 relatable we're all kind of covered in our own armor you know and terrified of taking that armor off and that's the thing that that crosses him over um into a character that we're all going to really want to follow i couldn't feel in better hands than in the hands of Gina Carano <laughs> uh who plays Cara Dune in the series who is you know it 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 a band of misfits kind of come together in this uh, first season and uh she being the other uh, primary character in the first season who is you know the toughest and uh, the most dangerous and the most human and 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 she is also um a survivor a loner and a reject and uh, uh and you know how we draw uh, to each other us loners and rejects and uh and 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 she's the one who can kick everybody's butt <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do this show without dave feloni i think he is the truest um lover of 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 the material um we can all try to compete uh to his level of 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 love is just the best word for it for the world of star wars and 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 we would all lose against him 
having seen the screenplay, I immediately had the feeling, yes, there was something of, of substance there. Storytelling is uh, something which uh, has a perennial stability probably since Paleolithic times, people sitting around a campfire and telling stories. So <coughs> this uh, is really good in storytelling and it has a lot of openings for complete fantasy and uh, I found the dialogues and the constellations of uh, figures in the film quite, quite interesting. And I had the feeling, yes, that's something I should do. They all know what they are doing. They all have uh, vision, and I think it's basically John Favreau's vision that guides the whole thing. And it's very, very pleasant to work on a set where everybody is focused and calm. Never a loud word. I'm, I've never heard a loud word. That's beautiful. This new technology brings filmmaking back where it has been and where it should be. You can pick up a camera on your shoulder and, and do a, uh, some sort of a choreography between your actors and uh, the parallaxes of the background will be organized. You see, you see the set and the actors see the set and they sense it and they feel it. And this is fantastic, filmmaking back where it should be. Well, I come without any baggage of knowledge of previous elements of the story or characters and situations, doesn't matter. Uh, and of course, uh, the real Star Wars fans, they, they come anyway, but uh, you don't take anything for granted. You, you better give everything that's in you. You give your best. Uh, because there's more than the fans. I mean the fans see anything, everything anyway, but you have to find new audiences in different countries where Star Wars hasn't been um, that much present. And um, you have to expand the mythology. It is mythology of, of our days and it's very beautiful.